Thank you.
Please be seated. It's my privilege and my joy to welcome all of you to the memorial service, this witness to the resurrection and the celebration of life for Mary Grace. Your presence here is a blessing and a balm to the family and really to all of us who are grieving and gathered to celebrate Mary Grace. Hear now these words from Holy Scripture. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labors, and their deeds will follow them. Let us pray. O God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our deeds and our needs before we ask. Show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our, our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be held in your everlasting love. In Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, and let all God's people say amen. amen. Hymn number 301 can be found in the purple hymnal, the Glory to God hymnal, number 301. and. Let us stand.
poem by Mary Grace, Reverent River. I have learned to genuflect by watching the cypress trees hobble into the river, their knobbly arthritic knees sticking awkwardly out of the water, but kneeling nonetheless with the eagerness of sinners in need of baptism. I have learned the meaning of a profound bow by observing the ancient oaks clinging to the riverbank, thrusting their toes deep into the moist humus, their hunched backs bent low and brooding over the rushing water, mantillas of moss draped in their branches. Who knows what prayers the river and the oak whisper to one another? I have learned how to reverently dip my fingers in a holy water font by watching the willow as she trails her long, lean, limber fingers across the surface of the river, gently caressing it like a mother checking her child for fever, skimming it tenderly as if she is a lover committing to memory the river's beloved face. Amen. Four friends of Mary Grace have, have asked to speak this morning, uh, and I'll, I'll ask them to come forward in this order. First, Carla Trent, then Wen Yuen Wong, then Wendy Taylor, and then Dorsey Chambly. So, Carla. Uh, hello to everyone that is in attendance today. As I'm looking around the room, this is going to be a whole lot harder than I thought it would be. I probably should have prepared something, but I thought I would just go with the flow. Um, I just met Mary Grace back in February, but when I found out that she had died, I haven't had a death hit me that hard in 26 years since my mother died. And... I'm still mad at Mary Grace because I didn't get to say goodbye. And I fuss at her every day because <laughs> everywhere I turn in the house, you can't help but to see Mary Grace. And that's good and it's bad too. And to her father and her sister and brother-in-law and nephew and son and daughter-in-law and uncle and wife, I can never ever be able to understand what you're going through. And I have experienced major loss in my life. But Mary Grace was the kind of person where you couldn't help but to love her. You could, her laugh was just so <laughs> cartoonish that it would make you laugh. I mean, I, I just couldn't even believe it the first time I heard it. I was like, no, nah, that's fake. She's just nervous. <laughs> But then the more that she would laugh, I was like, that's for real. She could be in movies. She could do voiceovers. And she was just just so nice. And even when she was mad, she was just nice. And I'd be like, Mary Grace, get mad. It's okay to get mad. But she left doing something that she loved. So you can't really be mad at that. It's just, it's sad. And I miss her every day. And I know that. I will always miss her because just in such a short period of time, she impacted my life and my children's lives, and I've never seen anybody more devoted to the things that she loved than Mary Grace. And I know that she loved Chrissy, and I know that she loved her daddy because of the way she used to talk about him, <laughs> and I know that she loved Shelby and his wife, and she talked about her uncle too in the parade, and you know, it's just, she loved what she loved. And that's something that nobody can take away from her. So I just want to say that I am grateful to even have ever known her. I'm grateful for Chrissy. I'm grateful for all of her relatives because you made her what she is. Thank you. Oh, wow. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Wenyuan Wang. Uh, uh, me and my wife, Hui Zhuan, we are close friends to Mary Grace. Um, actually, uh, like it is our first in initiation um, for Mary Grace and Chrissy to take the trip to China because it was our wedding. Mm -hmm. So I, I had this picture of her, and you know, uh, holding our hands, exchange our rings, and that's part of the center of the ceremony. I bring it here to share with everyone. Um, I have to tweak this picture a little bit to make the light dimmer because the light from stage is so powerful that her face is near to white as invisible. Um, yeah, so I, I, and I say like, that's too much like a shaman. So, so, so let's turn down it a little bit, and you know, so we, which makes our like the face really red, but we don't care about that. So, but talking about Charmin, it kind of rem reminds me back, like um, three years back, uh, um, when Hui Jun was desperately looking for a boy boyfriend at that time, um, that Mary Grace cl uh, claimed that she has the secret witch power and she can, you know, hunt for a boyfriend for her. And there I was at the, uh, at the Thanksgiving dinner. And actually, um, it's, it's not, um, well, um, I, I remember Hui Jun tell me that in, in that night, and, and she and Hui Jun are, you know, uh, washing dishes, and she secretly told Hui Jun that, hey, this boy, he had the thing for you. Well, um, apparently I didn't, but, you know, um, but the thing is, um, it's a mark of word, sometimes you can link to someone. So it's a love of seed that you plant into someone's heart, so they begin to meet with each other. So that's the time me and Hui Juan met with each other and begin our journey. And this photo represents an even fresher start of our marriage life. So uh, Mary Grace was there to witness the whole process. She planted the seed, she see it grows, and you know, she see it kind of flourish and maybe prosperous. And we are also there to witness Mary Grace and Chrissy for their starts, for their life, all, for all those years that have been spent. We have several gatherings together, several times. It's all good times. And yeah, I mean, that's um, what we have, you know, witness each other. So um, just may God bless her on her next journey, and may God bless the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, friends of Mary Grace. Um, I'm Wendy Taylor, and have the distinction of being a best friend of Mary Grace's for many years. Um, it's just um, amazing to be blessed with that. Um, I met her many years ago in karate class. When you train together, you see each other in such a raw environment. You really get to know a person well, their strengths, their weaknesses, their triumphs, and their vulnerabilities. And you celebrate every accomplishment together Hugging a training partner thoroughly drenched in sweat makes you amazingly close in a very special way. Um, I was soon invited on a camping trip with Mary Grace and Kathy, and it became clear that these two people were gonna be friends for a lifetime. The real fun began when Mary Grace realized I had two blow-up kayaks. Well, she borrowed them for an outing with herself and Shelby one day and was hooked. All I heard about was how fun it was, and I gotta go with you, and um, finally, one wintry day, she convinced me to come out on the lake with her. After a blustery, frigid day, which the water froze our clothes stiff, 
we came in shore, teeth chattering, probably near hypothermia, and yes, it was so much fun. <laughs> and I knew there was gonna be a wild ride with this one. <laughs> well, payback is sweet. I did get to reciprocate the first Arctic paddle by talking her into an afternoon paddle on the deep river. If we only had some sense of river time then. It was a beautiful afternoon, only it got later and later, and darker and darker, and soon it was pitch dark. We couldn't even see the hands in front of our face. We had to stay close together talking to each other so we wouldn't drift away. All we saw was a shimmer of the water in the middle of the, of the river to keep us on track. The real excitement came when I realized there was a waterfall up ahead. <laughs> I yelled to Mary Grace, hang on, rapids coming up. Complete silence. <laughs> then, what, wait, stop, and maybe a few other choice words. <laughs> well, we made it through. <laughs> We hugged in the darkness and promised to do it again. <laughs> Maybe just starting a little early next time. The adventures were really just beginning as Kathy, Mary Grace, and I graduated to real kayaks and we spent as much time as we could camping and paddling. We discovered quiet coves with turtles, birds, fish, and otters. We edged our kayaks into blue heron rookeries and watched the babies flap on the nests these were tucked away in secret places very few people knew about. We found the biggest beaver dam I've ever seen. We sat in waterfalls sipping margaritas for hours. <laughs> we watched so many amazing sunsets shimmer on the water. Although we knew not to arouse Mary Grace for the sunrises because all you would get was a grumpy no from her tent. We enjoyed gourmet dinners from the camp stove. We sat around blazing fires, take, talking the night away, and her laugh was always bubbling out. She couldn't help herself and had to pick up every little baby frog she found. <laughs> my most favorite memory, which is in my heart forever, was floating out in the lake at night, laying down in our kayaks with our eyes to the sky, while hundreds and hundreds of shooting stars arced across the sky. Owls were hooting, bats were zooming, chirping frog and crickets completed the show. It was simply magical. I didn't think life could get much better, but Chrissy started joining our campouts <laughs> and soon became an irreplaceable musketeer around the campfire. One weekend, Kathy and Mary Grace had gone on a day paddle with some new people, and guess what? They're planning on going 200 miles. They're gonna raise funds for cancer research. Doesn't that sound fun and worthwhile? Uh, well, yes. Do you think we can really do that? So Hope Floats became the next adventure and has continued to be a yearly event for eight years. Kim and Chris Tart and all our Hope Floats family have become so close with Mary Grace, a huge part of the fun and stories. Mary Grace's antics with Hope Float's crew will have to be published as a book. It's far too much to talk about. But all of us have special memories of her on the tour and we keep them close in our hearts. On the Hope Float site, we all have a page with descriptions of ourselves. One part is to say something about what motivates you as a person. And I'd like to share what Mary Grace wrote. It's by Robert Frost. Life is not a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. <laughs> so well done, Mary Grace. I've had so much of you. Whatever you did, you were all in. Your soul always shined a little brighter than most. You were one of the few really best friends a person gets in a lifetime. I'm so lucky to have all the adventures we had together. I hope in heaven you found a waterfall to sit in and a zillion shooting stars to watch. I will always be grateful to you and we'll all see you again.
I hate to have to follow Wendy. My name's Dorsey Shambly. I'm, wow, there's a big crowd here. Um, my name's Dorsey Shambly. Um, I've been training, me and Mary Grace trained together for, I like to call her Mary Cool because that's what I called her all those years. We were trained together for 20 years at, um, in martial arts. I've got a, um, a letter here that our master instructor, Master Jolly, sent and would like for me to read to, to y'all. So here I go. Um, well, I don't need to introduce Master Jolly. Uh, Chrissy Shelby and the Butcher, Butcher family, our hearts and prayers go out to you today as you celebrate the life of Mary Grace. Sorry I cannot be joining you in this celebration of a wonderful woman who was a large presence in all of our lives. If I was there, the first thing I would say is cut out the drama, Mary Grace. <laughs> this was a running joke between us. I am one who wants to just to the main points of a story. Mary Grace needed all the details. Mary Grace taught me that in just receiving the main points, I was missing the excitement of the event and anticipation of the main events. Mary Grace enjoyed the complete picture. She lived her life this way. She was either all in or all out. I have never met anyone who had a bigger heart when it came to giving and helping others less fortunate. Even when they disappointed her or broke her heart, she would give them so many chances to use her to make th their life better. This is where Chrissy and Mary Grace were the great yin and yang. Chrissy with her logic and Mary Grace with her heart. <clears throat> Mary Grace enjoyed adventure and trying new things. She pushed herself in everything she set out to do. Karate, learning to use power tools, and, and that's a, that's a, I'm, yeah, I'm uh, ad-libbing now. Uh, quilting and wanting to be on her favorite show, Survivor. She took on many tasks at our karate school, which we are thankful for. She is and will be missed by all our karate family. I enjoyed all the years she was a student of mine at the school. We became friends and family who shared many confidences, laughs, and tears. She is and will be missed in so many ways. Mary Grace, I wish I could say, cut the drama. One more time. Thank you. The lection from the Hebrew Scriptures is from the book of Psalms, the 16th Psalm. Sustain me, O God, for I am anchoring my faith in you. I say it again, you are my Lord, when I am estranged from you, I have nothing that is of any real worth. The significant and contributive people of this world are those who know you. They are the individuals I must respect. Those who make lesser things their ultimate concern are investing in eventual trouble and grief. I cannot worship their idols or respect their objectives. I have chosen to make God my ultimate concern. God is the pilot of my vessel. Thus the course before me will lead to ultimate fulfillment. I am guaranteed an inheritance of infinite value. I look to God as my chief counselor, even in the darkest of night. God is ready to teach and guide me. I need only to recognize God's perpetual presence because God continually surrounds me. I shall not 
lose my way. Is it any wonder that I am happy? Even my humanity, my tangible body, rests in the blessed realization of this security. God will keep even my human self from the destructive clutch of evil. You do show me the paths I must take. Within your all-embracing presence, there is genuine fulfillment. In my relationship with you, I discover incomparable and eternal joy. The lection from the Gospels is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. That very same day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing? As you walk along, they stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. <laughs> All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free, and this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported. But of him? They saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets? Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing and then broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road 
and explain the scriptures to us. They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven, assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they recognized him at the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I remember when the call came saying that she was gone. And immediately I said, no, no, no that can't be true. And now, even a month later, I still have moments of disbelief. And as I've thought back to my initial reaction, certainly there was shock and disbelief, but there was also objection. No, this, this isn't right. I thought about Chrissy handling this all alone on the other side of the world. I thought about her family her many friends, her directees, the Rose of Sharon Catholic Worker House, the Listening Place, our own congregation, everyone who loved her, everyone who counted on her. And just as I still have moments of disbelief and denial, I still object that no is still strong within me, I confess. But gradually as an acceptance of reality, has sunk in, and I tell you, it is Mary Grace's own spirit nudging me toward this. I am looking for my yes. The no is still strong within me, but I am looking for my yes. Looking for what it means for all of us, each in our own way, to find our yes in all of this. And of course, being together like this is so important. It helps immeasurably. Seeing so many others around us in one place here on holy ground and so many others she touched who are with us in spirit today, it helps us celebrate who she was and all the ways she gave of herself so generously. Mary Grace herself was such a vibrant yes in our lives. Yes to life itself, yes to all its wonders and its struggles, yes to faith and serving others, yes to laughter and compassion, yes to love, yes to God. And she is as unswervingly dedicated to us finding our yes and living it forward as she ever was. If it is even possible, even more so now. The Episcopal theologian and peace activist William Stringfellow experienced a grievous loss in his own life, the sudden death of his life partner and husband, Anthony Town. He wrote a book about it entitled, My Experience in Mourning. For him, grief was the total experience of loss, and with the grief came the full range of raw emotions, fear, abandonment, anger, melancholy, bereftness, all suffered privately within oneself, he wrote. But for him, mourning was about something different, what he called the liturgies of recollection. And he found there affection and honor and deep gratitude. Whereas grieving is about weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, which does, thank God, eventually subside, mourning is about rejoicing in the Lord, he wrote. And it can go on for a very long time and be a beautiful and creative thing in our lives. 
Morning Anthony, he said, kept me grounded in the community the two of us had shared. A community that is not ended by death, but continues in a new form. Morning was for him an exquisite bitter, bittersweet experience, something he actually came to enjoy. He wrote, I do not expect the grief to ever be fully dissipated, but I do not want the mourning to ever be completed. My hope and prayer for all of us is that the sharp pangs of grief will subside, and naturally that will take longer for those who were so intimately connected to her. But my prayer is also that our mourning, which has celebration and honoring in it, which has joy and gratitude in it, alongside the sorrow, that our mourning will go on for the rest of our lives, that she will never be forgotten, and that the values she embodied will continue being lived out in the world in and through us. As Allison was reading The Road to Emmaus story, one of Mary Grace's favorite scriptures, it occurred to me that Jesus was helping Cleopas and his companion move from grief to mourning, from devastating loss to a creative participation in his continuing life. Their hearts burned within them. They burned with recognition. They burned with excruciating loss. And yet they burned with an undeniable presence, an undeniable power, an undeniable yes. He was helping them move from their no to their yes. And as we all move toward finding our yes in the wake of Mary Grace's death, I invite you to listen to the words of Edward Hayes and hear them speaking to you as if from Mary Grace's own spirit. My love for you is truly timeless beyond the touch of bony death. I leave myself not to the undertaker for decoration in his house of the dead, but to your memory with love. I leave my thoughts, my laughter, my dreams to you whom I have treasured beyond gold and precious gems. I give you what no thief can steal, the memories of our times together, the tender love-filled moments, the successes we have shared, the hard times that brought us closer together and the roads we have walked side by side. I also leave you a solemn promise that after I am home in the bosom of God, I will still be present. Whenever and wherever you call on me, my energy will be drawn to you by the magnet of our love. Whenever you are in need, call me. I will come to you with my arms full of wisdom and light to open up your blocked paths, to untangle your knots, and to be your avenue to God. And all I take with me as I leave is your love and millions of memories of all that we have shared. So I truly enter my new life as a millionaire. Fear not nor grieve at my departure, you whom I have loved so much, for my roots and yours are forever intertwined. Mary Grace, we will miss you. But we thank God for the gift of your life, and we rejoice with you in the Lord. We rejoice that the angels have led you into paradise, that you have now joined the church triumphant, and we rejoice in the Lord with you that you have heard the homecoming words of our loving God. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now the joyous company of all the saints in glorious light. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. 
O oh God, you alone are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Mary Grace, with all your saints, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor sighing, but life everlasting. Amen. This commendation is one of the oldest in Christian tradition, dating back to the very early days of the Christian movement. Into your hands, O God, we commend Mary Grace. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your infinite mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. There is a beautiful reception following in the Fellowship Hall, a time to gather, to eat, to embrace the family, to embrace one another. Uh, there will also be others who will share personally from their own experience with Mary Grace. So we are dismissed. <laughs>